In August of 2020, Alexei Navalny, the Russian opposition leader, was boarding a plane from Tomsk, Russia to Moscow, Russia. Partially through the flight, he fell violently ill. The plane took an emergency landing and he was rushed to the hospital and put in a coma. A few months later, he did survive. But during his process of being in the hospital, it was discovered that he was poisoned with the famous Russian poison Novichok. As you can see on the left, he looks healthy. He looks strong. On the right, you can see he's he's weak. He's frail. Definitely something happened to him. Okay. A lot of people thought he was going to die. When I was reading up on this case, I thought he was going to die. You don't survive Novichok. And I'm going to talk about what Novichok is, what nerve agents are. He was lucky. He actually expected to be poisoned. Most people expected him to be poisoned because he was going up against Vladimir Putin. So let's talk more about some nerve agents. Well, these aren't nerve agents. Some of these are just poisons. In 2004, Viktor Yushchenko was running for president of Ukraine and was poisoned by the famous Agent Orange, which was used during the Vietnam War. As you can see, his skin became very bumpy, discolored. His eyes were puffy. He had a whole host of different effects from the poison. He did survive. But as you can see on the right, the scars still remain. Alexander Litvinenko was not so lucky, though. He was a Russian defector. He was poisoned with polonium-210. November 1st, he fell very ill. He died 22 days later, 2006. And the picture on the right, I believe, was the last picture taken of him before he died. He died from acute radiation poisoning. So these are just the faces of chemical warfare in general. What I'm going to focus on today is nerve agents and Novichok specifically. So let's keep going. So what is Novichok? Novichok is a nerve agent that was designed in the 70s to the 90s. The thing about it is we don't really know much about it. It was supposed to be a secret. The secret was sort of revealed a couple decades ago by a Russian chemist who apparently worked on this drug. Well, this poison. And it's what's called a binary chemical weapon. As in you need two of them to make the poison. So both of them separately aren't poisonous, but when they combine, they are poisonous. And it's done like this because it's safe delivery, right? You have one person carries compound A, one person carries compound B, they meet somewhere, mix it up, and then they might spray it on your doorknob, so you touch it and touch your face. You might spray it on your water bottle. It's very subtle, right? But it's it's done like this because it's just easier to, to deliver and it offers a more efficient method of poisoning. Okay, so what are nerve agents? Nerve agents are simply organic compounds that disturb nervous system function. So there's a bunch of different types and categories. I'm just gonna list a few. Sarin is a G-series nerve agent. That's a famous poison. You can look these up. They're really interesting the way they work. VX is an extremely lethal poison. That's part of the V-series, okay? As you can see, all these have these backbones, right? And that's characteristic of nerve agents. They have a similar backbone, right? And here we have A230 and A234, which are Novichok. Novichok is a group of compounds, right? That, right, you have a couple that are combined to produce an effect, but it's a group. It's not just one compound like, like cyanide here. It's a combination of a few of them. So how do they work? Well, in our bodies, we have this compound called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine communicates the message to the brain that these muscles have to move, either voluntary or involuntary, what's called motor function, right? Muscle movement. When acetylcholine is released, it has to get broken down. Okay, you can't have a buildup of acetylcholine because it'll cause all sorts of nervous system dysfunction. So. You have a molecule called acetylcholine esterase, right? So esterase. And this is essentially an enzyme. Enzymes, you know, they'll eat up molecules and break them down or they'll speed up reactions, right? This is a little, little Pac-Man here. So Pac-Man eats acetylcholine and then acetylcholine is broken down into acetate and choline. Again, this is necessary because you can't have a buildup of this, of this acetylcholine because you don't want your nervous system to go crazy. 
okay? Now let's look at how nerve agents work. So nerve agents are basically inhibitors of acetylcholine esterase, right? They stop Pac-Man from eating acetylcholine. And because of that, acetylcholine builds up. Like I said before, you don't want acetylcholine to build up because then you cause all sorts of issues, right? Like I said, acetylcholine helps regulate voluntary and involuntary motor function. So what happens is first the killer bees, bronchospasm and bronchorrhea. Bronchorrhea is excess mucus produced in the bronchial tissue, right? The tissue that lines the airway and bronchospasm is basically when your your airway constricts this happens this is what happens when you go through an asthma attack i have asthma and this is not comfortable but as you can see the flow here is very clear but as the spasm gets worse it gets tighter and tighter and tighter all right and you could have you could asphyxiate basically you choke to death and can't breathe then nerve agents cause something called sludge. Sludge is salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, GI distress, and emesis, right? Overproduction of saliva, of tears, of urine, uh, defecation of feces, GI distress, and vomiting. And again, all these can happen involuntarily. So you can be, your bronchus can be spasming while you're involuntarily defecating on yourself or vomiting everywhere or tearing or, or salivating. So you can see now how deadly these nerve agents are because a lot of these functions that your body normally regulates like a heartbeat or breathing, now it's all jacked up. You could die from cardiac arrest, right? Or any, or any combination of any of these things. Once you ruin that acetylcholine and its flow in the body, you can, you'll die a pretty terrible death. That's why they're so effective. So let's talk about Novichok specifically. So Novichok is very interesting. Um, from a chemistry perspective, it's pretty ingeniously designed because in, I don't know the year actually, but at some point the Chemical Warfare Convention was signed. Basically it was an agreement by a majority of the countries in the world to not use chemical warfare on human beings. So there's a set of molecules that you can't design because they could be used to make poisons. Novichok is actually not on those list of molecules down here, these precursors. It evades any kind of chemical detection. It evades any NATO protective gear, right? NATO um, has a lot of gear that's useful for chemical warfare. It evades that. And because it's binary, like we talked about before, it's safe to handle. So you could send a two man job, right? get things mixed up, spray it, and then leave. It's done very, very well, and they're very good at it. I think Alexei Navalny, they said that the poison was on his water bottle or his tea. I think they said he had tea. The only thing he had that day was tea. Somehow, they came in, poisoned him, and got out. That's just how it goes. So again, the effects are not entirely known, but from those who have been poisoned, the effects of Novichok are very similar to other nerve agents. And I keep mentioning this, but it's extremely, extremely lethal. Most people that get poisoned by this, they're not, they're not surviving. And usually the time between poisoning and death is very, very quick. Alexei Navalny was very lucky because he assumed he would get poisoned. And when he felt off, he knew he had been poisoned. So he reacted very quickly. So there is an antidote. There's a couple of them. This one is called atropine. It essentially reverses the effect of um, acetylcholine esterase inhibitors and helps people recover and not die. This is, we only have a few of these, but if you use it fast enough in the right amount of time, the person will survive. Most of the time, the people that get poisoned just feel like they're sick. And by the time they feel like they're sick, they're pretty much dead because, you know, their health degrades very quickly. Anyway, that's the video for today. I just wanted to briefly talk about this topic because let's face it, it doesn't matter how developed the country is, they are designing potent chemical weapons in secret because that's what major world powers do. 
I want to talk about this because it's such a, a more recent thing. Um, and poisonings are very common, more common than you, you think. And I think it's very interesting to learn about this information. So that's the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Please like, comment, subscribe as I try and build up this channel. I will be posting another video sometime soon, so be on the lookout for that. Until then, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you listening again, and have a great day. I'll see you next time with another video.